Hi, I'm Phil Constantine, and this is Travels with Phil as I go around the country. On this visit, we are going to see the literary masters of Concord, Massachusetts, all the small town of the Lexington and Concord fame. We're going to see Louisa May Alcott, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Nathaniel Hawthorne, and Henry David Thoreau. They all lived in the area. They all died in the area, and they're all buried in the area. They are some of the pictures you'll see in the Concord Museum. So let's start off with Louisa May Alcott. I remember her personally because I went to an elementary school named after her. Perhaps her most famous work is Little Women. And let's take a video or take a look at the video I shot. Louisa May Alcott's Orchard House, home of Little Women. This is her home. It's in the Concord area, as in Lexington and Concord, start of the Revolutionary War. Later era, of course. But this is the house where little women, little men, all the little people were written, talked about, discovered. Emerson, the folks that lived in the area, Thoreau, the transcendentalist, the bad trees, the nice manicured lawn. So mainly it's older women coming here with young granddaughters. But uh, if you like Louisa May Alcott, this is it. And it is an interesting museum there. Now let's go look at some of the things associated with Ralph Waldo Emerson. There's a picture of him, and he has a house out here. Now a lot of his uh, artifacts have been moved over to the Concord Museum, but they still have the house. Here's a video. Charles Bethel continues from the Concord Museum. This is Ralph Waldo Emerson's study. Restored. He was a leader of the Transcendentalist movement. He believed that um, basically people were good as long as you'd uh, leave them alone. And if you read the uh, piece there, it says it was moved here because this house had a major fire. But uh, this is where he entertained his guests and did some of his work, at least the furniture. And there is some, there are some pretty artifacts in here and things associated with him. And then our next literary person is Henry David Thoreau, uh, well known as the person who wrote on Walden Pond, or Walden Life in the Woods, I should say. Here's a video. Charles, continue. This is the David Thoreau room at the Concord Museum. Some of his woodworking uh, samples here. He was in the pencil making business, so he made pencils. And a uh, ruler box, harp, rocking chair, his bedstead, his work table. He was held, wrote the article Civil Disobedience about him being uh, jailed for non taxes, non payment of taxes, because there's a protest in Mexico and the American War, and that's the key to the cell he was held in. His flute. That's the pen he used for his last work. Worked as a surveyor. And used those snowshoes and cane and spyglass to steal the birds. And I'm not going to try to tell you uh, lots and lots of details about them. You can look them up on various websites, and I'll have links below. And on Walden Pond, or Walden Pond, is uh, where he lived for a while, trying to get away from it all. One of his famous quotes. This is the site of where the cabin had been. Pictures of Walden Pond when I was there. Uh, you couldn't drive up. Now, there you go. It was closed. It was too full, so they made people go around. All right, Nathaniel Hawthorne. He's a, another well-known artist. He did The House of Seven Gables, The Scarlet Letter. Let's take a look at The House of Seven Gables. The film continues in Salem. The House of the Seven Gables. The story by Nathaniel Hawthorne is believed to be partly inspired by this house. He spent some time here as a child. He was friends with the lady who owned it. And as you talk, a gable is this piece right here, a triangle, or, well, whatever, a peak. It goes all the way up to the roof, and so the house has seven of them. There are some stories that say that the lady owned it was sort of the inspiration for the actual story. He didn't live here, but uh, he spent some time here. Now, 
uh, several of the other houses out here, uh, which by the way is very pretty, very lovely. Uh, several of the other houses out here were brought here uh, by the uh, foundation that operates the uh, facility out here. There's a star compass, compass rose. But uh, it's uh, in Salem, just down the uh, street, same area as all the witchcraft stuff. Now we saw uh, he spent some time up in Concord with the Alcott, Thoreau, and Emerson. But this is the actual house that he was born in. Now he was not born here. He was born in the house, but not here. Uh, the house was brought here later when it was about to be destroyed. The local church owned the property and they were going to destroy it so they could build a parking lot. So the uh, foundation that operates the home uh, got the house and brought it here. So several of these houses, uh, this was the one of the original owners of the home uh, here. The Seven Gables were uh, sea captains. And this is, as you can see on the side, is where they did their counting after they came back. Or accounting, if you want to call it that way. Old King Cole in his counting house kind of thing. Travels with Phil at the House of Seven Gables in Salem, Massachusetts. And even though this is in Salem, I include it with the Concord uh, Literary Greats. This was uh, the lead character, Miss Prim, from uh, Scarlet Letter. And the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery, where all four of these uh, literary giants are buried. Here's the video. Travels with Phil Thoreau, Henry David Thoreau. Look at all the pencils and pens we were discussing here. Why? significance in that his family made pencils thought maybe for that maybe because he was an author hard to tell Move back over here Nathaniel Hawthorne's just around the corner Yeah, that's Excuse your me. father. They died the same year. Well, he can ask that young man. He brought one with him. They want to know why people were leaving pens. I, uh, from, several people have told me this because just as a tribute to being a writer. Or people that were writers, too, that were inspired by them. Just a little bit further, that was Louise May Alcott there. And just a little bit around the corner here is uh, Emerson. Had a little bit of difficulty uh, getting around to his actual headstone, which is around on the back side of these ones. It's the big marble chunk out there. It's only showed it from this side of it. These are other members of his family. And then the big marble piece coming in, that's his actual grave. Had problems with the video from the other side. And so these are the four literary giants that are all buried in the same spot in Concord. They all lived here at one time or another, and they associated with each other in Concord, Massachusetts. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up by clicking on the button below. You're welcome to leave comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And finally, if you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button over on the bottom right hand corner. Thank you again for watching.